Okay, good, good evening, everyone. We're, um, we're here to present uh, the Group 5 team we're here to present the Church of Sardis, otherwise known as the Dead Church, or the Church with Reputation, but without spiritual substance. As noted in Revelation 3, verses 1 to 6. And uh, these are presented by uh, G.U., for us on the presenting on uh, on the background on the church and geographical location and economic importance by Regina Concepcion presenting on the distinct cultural characteristic of the region and effect on the church and how Jesus presented himself to the church. Imelda Domingo presenting on affirmation, correction, and exhortation to respond with, and myself presenting on the promise to overcome and the summary and perspective. Let's start with the geographic, geographical location. Okay. Sardis, geographically, is located in what is modern-day Turkey, was once the capital of the ancient Lydian kingdom around 600 BCE. The city of Sardis was about 30 miles southeast of Thyatira and about 50 miles northeast of Smyrna. Sardis was on a major commercial trade route and also on an important military road. The ancient city of Sardis was built on a plateau of crumbling rock rising 1,500 feet above the plain. The plateau was part of Mount Malus, whose height was 6,700 feet. The walls of of the elevation on which the city was built were almost perpendicular and the city was inaccessible except by one narrow passage which was steep and easily fortified and guarded at the base of the cliff flows the little pactolus river once famous for its golden sands sardis was considered an impregnable uh, fortress the natural defenses of Sardis made the guards and citizens proud and overconfident. The walls were cares carelessly guarded with sometimes fatal results. Sardanes had a name and reputation of life, but in reality, they were dead. Men say you are living, though you are dead. And you are supposed to be alive, but in reality, you are dead. Our other translations. The church may have much organization and the most up-to-date machinery, so that it hums with activity, making every pretense of life and vitality. Sweet speaks of Sardis as the paradox of death under the name of life. In the light of the historic background of the city of Sardis, the epistle of Christ to the Sardinian church was very appropriate and its language very impressive. The city had fallen and was finally destroyed because the ruler and citizens had been overconfident. Sentinels had failed to maintain a diligent watch. The enemy took them off guard. Jesus warned the church that if they too failed to watch because of overconfidence, he would overtake them as a thief in the most unexpected moment. Croesus is credited for introducing gold and silver coins or refined coinage, which contributed significantly to trade, the Lydian economy, and is noteworthy in world history. Lydia was one of the richest kingdoms of the ancient world. The Lydians are reputed to have been the inventors of coin money. Distinct cultural characteristics of the region and effect on the church. Sardis had been Lydia's capital and was proverbial for its riches. To this day, our idiom, as rich as Christus, acknowledges this fact. For Christus was the king of Sardis, who had almost unlimited riches, yet who led the Legion Empire into defeat and decline. Sardis epitomized the complacency, softness, and degeneration which invariably ultimately accompany wealth. As a pagan city, Sardis was home to the well-known temple of Artemis, which still exists today as ruins. It was dedicated to a local Asiatic goddess, usually referred to as Cybele, 
who was un identified with the Greek Artemis. This patron deity was believed to possess the special, special power of restoring the dead to life. This church was surrounded by paganism and idolatry, but it failed to stand out amidst the darkness. Instead, the Sardinians accommodated the idols of their culture. How Jesus presented himself to the church. To Sardis, Christ introduces himself as the possessor of the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. The seven spirits represent the Holy Spirit in the fullness and completeness of his power and duration. To the church that was spiritually dead and whose lamp of faith was flickering and almost extinguished, Christ represents himself as having the fullness of his spiritual power and the completeness of his spiritual gifts. The Spirit is sometimes called the give giver of life. With this gift, there is hope even for a dead church. The seven stars represent the human guides and teachers of the church, including the angel of the church in Sardis. Here is shown the relation between Christ as the giver of the Holy Spirit and as the head of a ministry of human agents. The success of Christ's ministers depends upon the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is the seven spirits who make the seven stars shine. When ministers lose the gift of the Spirit, they cease to shine in God's firmament and become wandering stars. Jude 13. The Spirit of the Lord. Affirmation. Have a name that you are alive. The Church of Sardis had made for themselves a name. Name is here used to represent fame, reputation, or character. But you are dead. Their state is described in a single word, soulless profession. They had a name to live, but were dead. It is not a scandalous wickedness, but decent death, the form retained, the heart gone. Christ's own in word, ignored indeed, creeds correct, conduct respectable, life departed, sound doctrine and outward, outward propriety, affections not only waning but gone. His name held, his word read, his truth owned, himself forgotten. Having a reputation for loving dedication to Jesus, they had become spiritually dead. Jesus gave no affirmation for their faithfulness. Correction. Jesus corrected them for compromise, addressed their complacency, spiritual passivity, and deadness. Born again, but lacked their former dedication and devotion to Jesus. His correction is both a stern warning and a call to revival. Compromise truth are lies disguised as truth. Exhortation to respond with. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Revelation 3, 2-3. to a Specific Actions to Restore Their Spiritual Vitality Jesus wants the church in Sardis to take several specific action to restore their spiritual vitality. Here's what he desires from them and even the churches today. Number one, wake up. Jesus calls the church to awaken from their spiritual slumber. They need to become aware of their true condition and be vigilant in their faith. Number two, strengthen what remains. He urges them to strengthen the aspects of their faith that are still alive but are in danger of dying. 
This involves reviving their commitment to God and reinforcing the parts of their spiritual life that are weak. Number three, remember the gospel. Jesus instructs them to remember what they have received and heard. This means recalling the teachings of the gospel and the truth they were taught when they first came to faith. Number four, hold fast. The church is called to hold fast to the teachings and commands of Jesus. They need to maintain their faith and obedience to God's word. Number five, repent. Jesus calls for genuine repentance from their complacency and spiritual deadness. This involves turning away from the current state and returning to a vibrant and faithful relationship with God. Number six, be ready for his coming. Jesus warns them that if they do not wake up, he will come like a thief, implying that they need to be ready for his return or judgment, which could come unexpectedly. Be ready for Jesus' return. Don't be like them. In essence, Jesus wants the church in Sardis to revive their spiritual life return to their foundational faith, and live in a state of readiness, obedience, and repentance. You will not know at what time He will come to you. Revelation 3, 1-6 to The promise to, uh, to the overcomers. As noted in Revelation 3, verse 5, He overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Jesus promised three rewards to this church for those who would overcome spiritual deadness by sustaining a life of watching. These three re rewards include our clothing, name, and presentation to God, that reflects what we have accomplished in our obedience in this life. The first reward is being clothed in white garments. As the word says in Revelations 9, Revelation 19 verse 8, she has been permitted to dress in the radiant, in the fine radiant linen, dazzling and white. For the fine linen is signifies and represents the righteousness, the upright, just and godly living, deeds and conduct and right standing with God of the saints, God's holy people. I will not blot out his name from the book of life. A person's name before God is associated with their actions and honor. This book in heaven contains vast information about our lives, including our works and deeds. Jesus, oh, uh, Malachi 3 verse 16 mentions that then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and, and who meditate on his name. Jesus is promising not to blot out the record of the remembrance of their righteous deeds if they repent from their spiritual deadness and walk in diligence as they had in the past. Our good deeds are recorded in heaven, but are blotted out if we turn from them. Eternal rewards and crowns and potential full rewards can be lost. As the word says in John, 2 John verse 8 says, Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for but that you may be rewarded fully. The third reward is, I will confess his name before my father. This is not in reference to being saved, but to the reward of Jesus telling the story 
of your love and dedication to the Father many times throughout the eternity. So uh, Matthew 25 verse 21 says, His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So uh, before we go to the next slide, um, we are presenting this short video for four minutes on, uh, of course, on the Church of Sardis. A lot has been already said, and this will be repeated, but there's also a few that we, we, we are going to share with, with all of us. <laughs> Sardis was founded in the 12th century and built upon a crumbling rock at an elevation of 1500 feet and it became the capital of the Lydian Kingdom, one of the richest kingdoms of the ancient world. Coined money is reported to have been invented here. The almost perpendicular walls of the elevation on which the stronghold of the city was built made the inhabitants of the city overconfident and proud. During the reign of Croesus, one of the strongholds of the city was captured by Cyrus in 549 BC when one of his soldiers scaled the rock face at night and opened the gates to the Persians. He learned the secret route up after watching one of the guards, who had fallen asleep at his post of duty, go and retrieve his helmet that had fallen off his head. The inhabitants of the city did not learn their lesson and 300 years later suffered the same fate when Antiochus the Great captured the city. Carelessness, sleepiness and overconfidence led the city to destruction. This area that was once the bustling centre of the Lydian Kingdom now lies barren and deserted. Sardis, the city that was once alive, is now dead. The church in Sardis begins with the message, you have a name that you live, but you are dead. Like the city, the church in Sardis started with great promise, but quickly faded. No church or individual Christian can survive on past reputation, no matter how good this might have been. It was once stated that next to cowardice and treachery is overconfidence leading to neglect and slothfulness. Let us be wary of overconfidence, for 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 says, Let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. The church that had been hard working but loveless during the time of Ephesus, that became persecuted during the time of Smyrna, was compromised in Pergamos, apostate in Thyatira, is now dead in Sardis. Historically, we take this time period to be the end of the Reformation and just after the end of the Reformation. The leaders of the Reformation were those of vigour and consecration, but over time their followers, happy with the gains that their leaders had made, settled down into organised religion. Whilst improvements had been made from the mother church that they broke away from, the movements of Knox and Luther settled down into being a state religion supported by the public treasury. Even in Sardis, there was still hope. You have a few names. In fact, the name Sardis means that which remains. Despite the majority of Protestantism falling into dead formalism, there will be some who would overcome. Historically, during this time period, we see the rise of the American colonies, which formed the foundation to a new nation, providing new opportunities for the church. Those who overcome insiders receive perhaps the best promise of all. They will walk before me in white, and I will not blot their names out the book of life. If your spiritual life has become consumed with dead formalism, then the counsel to Sardis applies to you. Hold fast and repent. Repent of a lifeless religion of forms, routine and monotony and pray for renewal. Those who overcome in Sardis would be clothed in white robes. The white toga in Rome was a symbol of victory and joy. 
This city, this church, which suffered capture due to carelessness, is told to watch. May we watch our spiritual condition, that we don't become overconfident and keep a careful eye on our relationship and our walk with God. So um, we are alive in Christ, Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 5. So we want to... Um, we want all to share their um, how this presentation on the Church of Sardis impacted you personally. So time to get out of our comfort zone from our couches to share your insights. So thank you all. So we can unmute ourselves as to what impacted you personally from this uh, presentation on the Church of Sardis. I just want to um, uh, read my take, uh, Sister Lilita first, and then I'm just going to kind of expound. Um, just want to read, guys. My take is just like uh, the previous churches in Sardis that also... Uh, has a big problem and this problem is uh uh the spiritual is the, the spiritual death of of the church and to me to be dead means to be what to be without christ and uh most uh people in the church were not real believers um jesus says in in revelation 3 4 that there were a few who were but they are just going through the motions. Uh, the Church of Sardis is really an example uh, of a group of Christians who had deeds without faith. Without uh, faith, without uh, faith is dead. So these things makes me realize that this church has a serious problem, and we know that uh, there are most there's some uh, there are probably some churches also that. Uh, have the same problem before and in in our days today. So um, that they thought they were saved, but it's not. They did things that Christians do and said things that Christians say, but the truth is they were spiritually dead and on the way to hell. So uh, this reminds me what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, that it says, depart from me, I never knew you. And here in Revelation 3, 3 reminds us to really hold fast and we need to be faithful to what we thought and what we believe um, uh, because Jesus gave us all these warnings I uh, started from Ephesians and up to now and probably for the coming um, um, uh, the rest of our presentation for the seven th churches and uh, it calls us here to repent where we still could and because we don't know how much time we have so God gave us, you know, a robe. This is the promise to each and every one of us that we will be clothed with, uh, we need to clothe ourselves with fine linen, bright and pure. And um, what in fact impacted my life from uh, the Sardis, Sardis Church is that uh, serves as a warning to me of my spiritual complacency that truly really remind me um, to maintain my faith and be watchful and really actively um, address areas where my faith is lacking. And um, I need to really not compromise the truth or go back in ways that we have been called out to. Um, I really need to watch my spiritual condition so that I may not overconfident if you guys see that, that um, picture in our presentation that it shows overconfident he was like cutting the tree, but on the other side, he's standing on the wrong side. So uh, it's just like we're so confident of what we're doing, but truly it's already a danger. And that says I really need to keep my relationship and my walk with God. And in this church, and it's um, also uh, telling us that really we need to be alert and watchful. 
and pay attention to our faith because the devil is real. And like what it says that he, the devil is like a roaring, roar, roaring lion. So um, my response on this one is to really get up, repent, and go back to his word or his word, his name. And his truth is really our hope. Um, and uh, another thing that uh, really impact me is um, in sometimes it's true that I have experienced um, ups and downs in my walk with God, spiritual highs, but also spiritual lows. And uh, um, sometimes maybe uh, there's dryness in my souls. Times I wander from God, but in those times, I really need to remember what God have done, what I have learned, um, and, and, and repent, because I know that through repentance, uh, God promised that I will be clothed or we will be clothed with white garments. Um, but what I, we do in those lows in our lives is um, where I want to be watchful, to really pay attention because this is when the lies of the enemy comes. Uh, like the Sardians, you know, they fail to, main, to, to maintain, um, they fail to watch. Um, that's why when uh, on the presentation, uh, the person uh, did be able to go through because um, uh, they didn't pay attention, they didn't uh, watch. So the, the Persian marched through the ZD and opened, uh, and the, when the gates was open, they did be able to go through not only once, but it's twice. So that is why in this, in this, uh, church, Jesus told them that to wake up. Um, and, uh, it says that finish what we started and to remain attentive. You know, that's why, um, uh, the, the, my, my, my take in there, it's really watchful because if we do not watchful in these days, the, the lies of the enemy is always there and, um, the devil will not come in, you know, um, if we're not paying attention, uh, to our faith, uh, the devil is not, it's really easy to come in, um, because if we are not aware, the devil is already creeping inside and it's not easy to get out. And that's when we fell. I mean, that's my thing. Thank you, Sister, Sister Meltz. So uh, what caught me was the overconfidence. Uh, that's one. And so we can never be overconfident that we already know it all. So, okay, I'll not just be attending here and there because oh, they'll be saying the same thing. And uh, I already know it all. So then that's the, that will cause our fall. And I was remembering that picture of, as Sister Imelda mentioned, cutting the tree and uh, being on the side of uh, the one that's going to fall and will fall. So that, will, that led me to really um, be humble be humble and 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 uh have a servant heart even a servant leadership and also uh what got me was then this second reward i will blot out his name from the book of life so imagine that uh removing your name from the book of life because we fail or i failed to repent and imagine like doing all these works and uh Without the spirit, uh, you're dead. And that's also spiritual passivity and just being hypocrite. So uh, that's always my prayer that um, what we do is, is not just be showing off to, to others, maybe intentionally or not intentionally, but remain, we just be, remain in his spirit. So, um, yes. Shall I be calling people? Okay, I want to I wanna jump in because there's a lot already covered. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to add it. To it. <laughs> um, so, um, 
what I can add to it is because you know how this affects into my life and what what should I do um, and and how how do I uh, apply this uh, lesson into my life and yes uh, overconfidence is one so which you guys already have mentioned and you know to be living our life uh, to be you know to be grounded all the time. And uh, what what this does mean to me, if I had to be grounded, uh, would be uh, to be always looking to God for provision, right? Uh, even if you know, you know, uh, and not to look for our own strength, our own resources. Uh, if we have, you know, uh, even if we have a lot, you know, um, it's not to trust in the riches, uh, physical things, financial riches, but to be, um, to be going for looking for the spiritual riches, right? Uh, which we talked about the last, uh, I remember Sister Lilita brought that, uh, the spiritual riches, um, which actually gives us um, co connection with God, you know, um, you know, constant communication, um, um, what's his plan that he would have revealed to me. And for me, it's like, I'm really, I'm really, you know, looking for, or, you know, um, constant communication, how God talks to, to me and not be able to miss, like kind of prophetic vision or prophetic vision for my life, Not you know, right? So what what he's telling me to do, what he is telling me now and the future, especially the future, right? Because uh, I think that's the biggest thing for me personally to be always, you know, just like we said, we always be walking in with him in in the lane, right? Um, so that's the biggest thing for me is to be on constant communication and you know even listening to his voice. And then um, the other thing too is to avoid uh, living compromised life and complacency, because um, this could lead to an opening, which I think Sister Mel's already kind of uh, said about it. Um, opening for an enemy to attack and gain foothold, and that foothold could develop to be a stronghold into my life right that could be like you know at first it would be just a temptation and then all of the temptation you started looking and looking into it and then and then all of a sudden you got hooked up and then i got hooked up you got addicted to it and then addiction and then all of a sudden this actually dominates you know my life and i don't want that because i you know i have experienced that before and i'm trying to fight it you know and i know that it could also come back to my life that that's you know the, the you know that's that's the enemy is always attacking looking for opportunity and you know so you have to be always ready you know, you know we're wearing your armor but i guess the biggest thing also is to be connected right we i have to be connected i have to be constantly connected because that little gap and everything you know i know that's you know um that that's the opening that the enemy is waiting for um, and that could be that could develop into a into a big big problem that could even you know um, that could even turn my life into like not serving anymore not caring about it anymore a lot of you know we can see that on on the news a lot of you know pastors that are you know senior pastors that are you know famous and all this stuff and now they're stepping down you know a lot of them because we're humans you know we're humans and we are tend to be you know have that so it's like almost constantly be guarding always constantly be guarding um and not uh pursue any uh you know any crowns um and always be just like you said hum humble right and and the last thing would be you know the endurance because endurance for it is because this is a long for me it's not probably long but let's see it's a long you know it's the whole life until you <laughs> until you finish so you know uh it's to really just 
to endure because this could happen. It's not like, okay, after you're doing this for 10 years, you'll be stronger and you're, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be, you know, uh, immune to these attacks. It's not, I don't think they're going to be, anyone's going to be immune no matter how, you know, no matter what, what we do is there's always going to be, it's, it's, that's like what sister Lilita was saying. It's like a roaring lion looking for, you know, opening it to devour you, you know, the devil is. So uh, I think it's very, very important to be, you know, to to endure the ups and downs of life, to endure, you know, if we feel dry, to hold on, to endure what we need to do and, and hopefully enjoy what we do. Because sometimes we fall out of joy and we think you're like, okay, you know, maybe... I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm following something. So something is not wrong with my walk, you know, because I, I don't have the joy anymore. Mm. Uh, so, so those things that I want to, you know, I, that I got from, from what the presentation is. And thank you. Can I go next? Yeah, I'm going to go next. Uh, what I get uh, to this church is that they are like a picture perfect church in externally. But, you know, it's like, if you see, you just, like, if you're going to look, look on the picture, it looks perfect. Like, there's no scratch, no blemish, nothing. But if you look internally, like, deep inside, they are poor in spirit. So, what I think is, they're not under the leadership of and the guidance of the, they're no longer in the leadership and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So, what I get is, like, I feel like this church was deceived because of the outer picture, but deep inside they are deceived. I feel like as I walk with my journey in serving God, it is always to self-check with the Holy Spirit if I am in sync in what I do, that I must always have the guidance of the Holy Spirit in all the things that I do. The power of the Holy Spirit will keep me in check and aligned in the kingdom of God. Yelan po. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Dave. Right? Thank you, Brother Francis. Uh, truly, yes, deceived because they got overconfident like uh, the sergeants. They got overconfident that their cliff will not be climbed. So they, they were complacent in watching. So they got deceived that, hey, we can't be attacked because we have these great walls. So yes, uh, thank you for that uh, insight. Is that dead silence? Amen. So for me, actually, when I was reading this one, like what you have said, what did you get? How, how are you going to apply this one to you as for me? And when I was reading this one and then your presentation says, I know your works. So God knows uh, what I do, Right. And then God is telling me, Jesus is telling me, you have a reputation of being alive. Yes, I am actively alive. Uh, but deep within me, there's something that is not being activated. And I'm speaking for myself and probably others. You can relate, relate on that as well. And then this is a reminder, kind of like, you know, uh, uh, the faith that I have, it should work. 100% completely because God says here, Jesus says here, uh, and telling me right now, I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. And when I was reading this, uh, Jesus completed his, his journey, his ministry, the fulfillment of what we are, what I'm experiencing right now. I am saved. I am, uh, I am, uh, 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 recovered, redeemed by, by Jesus Christ. Now, this is a reminder for me, Ted. Uh, I know your work, but it's not completed. So do more. Uh, do something kind of like more and more. Can I complete the task I have given you? You know? And this is a, remind, a great reminder for me. Yeah, yeah, Jesus Christ, thank you for reminding me. Uh, you have given me this. Uh, you have saved me. You have given me this uh, church. You have given me this word uh, to share in everything, but it's not complete. You know, I can see that as as it is. You know, kind of like you know that was that was uh, 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 the message I'm getting right now. Just I need to complete whatever God has uh, instructed me to do uh, to be considered fully alive, kind of like really alive with the Lord. 
And uh, I like what he said here. Uh, Jesus uh, remember, uh, reminded me, remember, T uh, Ted, then what you have received and heard. So kind of like, yes, I receive your word, Lord. I receive your message. I keep that one. And then you heard that, then, you know, share it. Share it, you know, for the salvation of others. And because the reward there is, you know, uh, kind of like uh, God wants, and I, I think all of us, we are repenting for uh, the things that we heard and then we did not do. And uh, the reward kind of like uh, amazing, right? So um, in, in other words, for me, uh, as I as I as I look at this one, what is happening with me right now? I always declare, God, uh, Lord, you are my savior, you are my redeemer. Which is yes, I I I I I, I claim that, but there's something missing: the activation, full activation. You know, if I'm talking for myself, and I think the church as well, for the whole church, uh, like what Brother Dave mentioned, there are pastors and everything like that. But then again, not only pastors, even the members of the church, we are present. I am present in church, but not fully activated. Uh, I know the work, the works of God. I know, I know the message of the Lord. That's why, if I'm going to relate that to my mess, to my uh, uh, Monday Monday sharing, you know. Uh, there's some more. That's why I'm. 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 I, I'm. I wanted to hear more from the Lord uh, on how to be activated. You know, uh, busyness is there and everything like that. But it's a reminder for me not to be busy. Complete the task that I have given you. You know, and uh, there are so many people, uh, members of the church, also the same thing. I'm talking about the global church. Uh, there's like uh, uh, the faith is there. Pero not complete, not not in there, not intense, you know. Uh, and 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 the word here, I, I will go back again. The word here that Jesus said works. Uh, I I have not found your works complete. So if I'm gonna compare that to what Jesus did on the cross, Jesus fulfilled, completed the task, his ministry and his love for us. So what about me? I have to do the same thing. I have to complete and I have to uh, really fulfill the love uh, that God is uh, uh, telling me. But this is also uh, a reminder for me uh, when I mention about, remember then what you have received and heard. Yes, I received the grace from the Lord and I will keep that uh, in, in my heart, you know, the grace and mercy that he has given me. But at the end, at the end, it's still, it's incomplete. I have to, I have to uh, do more. Amen. Thank, thank you, brother Ted. Um, <clears throat> you or anyone might feel that way, but uh, I believe that we are changed from glory to glory. So we ascend from where we at. We if even if we fall, we don't go back to to the fall down down to the really deep but we just we start from where we at when we fell but not totally get back to the very start where where we at where we was but the thing is you know god is is it's the goodness of god really that will bring us from glory to glory and uh and um Yes, right. That I feel I I know because I you feel that okay. I, as you said, not complete, but I guess will not ever be come into completion into that fullness until Jesus returns. But then we ascend, and it's only then that we go higher and higher in His um, in our relationship with with Him. The, the reason why I say that because we're talking about personal. This is a personal, yeah. personal uh, uh, kind of like my relationship with the Lord. Kind of like it's not there, but yes, you, you're correct. Uh, we are changed from uh, glory to glory. But then I, I'm hearing God that there's something else that I need to do, and that's one thing I have to work on. And I'm really desiring and hearing Him on how to be more activated and get to the to the to the place where He wants me to to go where he wants me to uh, 
to really uh, fulfill the task that he has given me. I, I'm talking for myself personally. Yeah. Yes. We all are <laughs> same manner. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Ted. <laughs> I just want to say something, Sister. Uh, as you said, uh, we grow from glory to glory. Yes, we do. And uh, sometimes uh, there are things that happens in I'm talking to myself, my, my life, you know. Uh, yes, when I was, uh, there, are some, there are situations that, that really affect my, my walk with the Lord. Instead of what is important to me is how I respond. How I respond when I am in this situation, you know. Um, Every time, I, I know the promises of God, and I claim the promises of God when I'm not feeling good. You know, there are a lot of promises. Sometimes, um, be, uh, because, you know, uh, maybe fear comes to my mind, and it, it affects my, you know, it, it destroys or you know, it, that, it doesn't destroy, but it affects the promise of God. Parang, parang it, I, I, doubt comes into my mind. And that's why I said, you know, what is, uh, what is the most important thing to me is do I respond? How do I respond whenever the situation comes to me? Do I, you know, will I let my my faith decline you know just goes down or you know uh or will i wake up uh, as what the sardinians has to do because they are a dead church that's why jesus said wake up wake up church be watchful you know um uh, in in, the, in other commentary wake up means be watchful you know that's why uh in my life I, I i have to wake up i have to be watchful and uh and uh, and jesus said here in uh, um chapter 3 verse 2 be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for i have not found your works perfect before the lord he said be watchful and strengthen you know, remember in other translation, he said, remember what you received and heard, keep it and repent. That's why this this verse to me, uh, whenever I, I, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, the, the proper way for me to respond is to remember. He said here, remember what you received. And we always say, you know, Remember what God had done with you in the past, that he has blessed me, that he has healed me, that every, every time that I pray to God, you know, he does something to me. I have to remember that for me to have that faith again, to, you know, that, that uh, to, to my faith grow more and more. And then he said, what you received and you heard, what I heard. And that's why faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. That's why you, you keep, you remember what God has promised you. Remember the words, the promises that God gave you. And then, you know, so that your faith will grow because of that, what you heard, the, voice, the, the word of God. And then keep it, keep it in your heart. Uh, I remember what, uh, there's a verse that says in Proverbs, Son, pay attention to my word. Incline your ear to my saying. Let it not depart from your eyes. Keep it in your heart because they are life to those who find them and health to their bodies. And that is the verse that I always, you know, pray back to God. And that is what he said. Remember what you reserve and heard. Keep it and repent, and after that I repent. That is how I, 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 you know, I, I respond. Because sometimes, you know, even if you say you're strong in the Lord, no, you are not. I mean, there are times, 
That's why, as Brother Dave said, you have to have a continuous, you know, relationship with the Lord in His Word and in also in prayer. That's why, to me, what I got from the the Church of Sardis, uh, I was reading and I I I I I was so amused with the history that they are in a you know. 1,500 feet, and it is a walled city. Remember, it's a walled city. Nobody can enter, but because they will, did not watch, you know, one of the soldiers of the Persian, you know, were able to open the door and they were defeated. And that's why, that's why God said, be watchful. <laughs> watchful because we have an enemy. As Sister Imelda was saying, the devil is there. You give him a little bit and he's going to go get the, a big part of you. That's why the, the main, uh, the, the lesson that I, I, I got from the Church of Sardis is, you know, finish what you started and remain attentive to your faith. You know, you got, uh, we all know that we are running a race. God gave us a race. We have to finish it. <laughs> we have to finish it. You, where you started, you finish it. And that is what I got from the Church of Sardis. Thank you, Sister Nona. Yes, we have a history with God, and we do not take that for granted. Yes. And uh, as, as, as you mentioned, um, with that history, we build up our relationship more intimately more and yeah. more thank yes. you for that sister Nona. amen i'd like to share next yeah uh, for me what scares me uh, a lot about this church is how you could be perceived as alive but in reality be dead because i actually resonated a lot with um this church especially since i've been able to identify um that church function and you know in other in like in the past when it comes to the way that I live my life, because I remember uh, the video that you guys showed earlier regarding the church of Sardis and how uh, I think the, the man mentioned how, you know, when it becomes a routine, that's when it becomes dangerous because I've definitely seen it evident in my life in the past where, you know, I feel like I was dead in a way where my heart was disengaged with what I was doing with the ministry. Cause I remember watching this, this preaching and this preacher, uh, I'm just going to paraphrase, paraphrase what he said, but it becomes dangerous when our joy becomes our job. And I think to me that re resonates a lot with me in my life because in anything that I do in the ministry that I partake in, no matter how big or how small it may be, I want my heart to always be engaged. I want my heart knowing that, it is connected to the Lord. And when my heart becomes disengaged to the things I do, I, I've realized that the things that I say, the things that I do, it's like it's like empty words, right? And so when it comes to this church and when it comes to the function of this church in my life, uh, God has really just shown me the importance of remembrance. And I remember Pastora sharing about the power of remembrance because especially with what it said in the verse regarding remember therefore, and I know also with the church of Ephesus, Jesus also says, remember how far you've fallen. I think it really brings me into a sense of comfort knowing that the Lord is bringing me into remembrance, into a place where He's calling me back to to how I once was. And I think to me that's so powerful because I remember in whenever I would do ministry and I would bring these conversations up to the Lord where, you know, I feel disengaged or I feel like the things that I'm doing, they're not really full of vigor. I always remember the times earlier when I was getting more serious into the faith and seeing how passionate I was. And I remember asking the Lord, Lord, I want to be like or like who i was like back then you know full of vigor full of um excitement full of joy and i found and i and i found that through those prayers uh my heart has been changed and so in my life today where it's so easy to be disengaged with the things that we do because i know especially for me there's a lot of ministries that i am partaking in and so it's easy to feel disengaged when oh okay i'm just gonna do this ministry and do that ministry and be done with it but uh i really want to have a heart that is so 
connected with the Lord when it comes to worship, when it comes to reading the posts, when it comes to even having these discussions with everyone here in this place. I want a heart that is so engaged with the Lord that even um, how I listen, how I respond, and how I act to others, I know that my heart is with the Lord. And which is why I which is why, yeah, this 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 church has really just resonated with me. And so when it comes to my everyday life now, I always reassess myself and always re-examine myself on am I am I really engaged with the things that I'm I'm doing or am I just doing it for the sake of routine or am I just doing this for the sake of doing my job? Am I really finding joy in the things that I'm partaking in? And it, and am I voicing out my my concerns when it comes to those things? And so when it comes to avoiding being dead in, in, inside when it comes to avoiding being disengaged in my heart i've always found that reassessing myself and always coming before the lord in prayer to always bring me back to the first love has always helped me and has always re reinvigorated my heart and i just thank god because of his faithfulness to, towards the, the things in my heart and Time and time again, with all these different presentations and all these different churches that we've been going through, time and time again, I've always just seen the Lord's faithfulness to these churches and, and to us, okay. despite even our our wrongdoings, our wickedness, and all of these things. He he has bringing us and inviting us into a place of repentance and turning back to Him. And so, yeah, these these presentations have really just touched my heart and when it comes to being engaged, I always want to always hone in and hold on to that lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Angelo. Um, personally, for me, it's always the joy in what I'm doing for the Lord and with the Lord. Be it in my prayer, be it here in our discipleship class, be it going to church on Sundays and, and, uh, Whatever I'm doing uh, for the Lord and with the Lord, it's just going to be always the joy. But if the joy is not there, then I have to reassess myself. Of if I'm, as what Angelo mentioned, I'm just doing, doing the motions and doing the motions. It might look good, but that will make me a hypocrite of just going over, doing all this stuff we think I'm doing for the Lord, but I don't have the joy in doing that and uh see, see delight in me and i will delight in you says the lord so then um i i'm just a hypocrite if i do all this and and that doesn't bring me joy because if that doesn't bring me joy i'm sure it will not bring joy to the lord <laughs> i yeah. think i think that's the reason why um in one of the lines here, it says, I have not, where was that? Have, I have not found your works perfect before God because you're just doing the work and there is no joy. There is no love. It's not wholehearted. Therefore, God does not see it as perfect. Even if you did the work, the heart was not there. So I think that's the reason why, like he said there, I have not found your works perfect before God. And one of the things that actually um, strike me is the the beginning, right? Uh, you said that this church is also called um, a church with reputation, but no spiritual substance or true spiritual character. And I think that be it relates to like how Jesus described himself to this church where he says these things says he who has the seven spirits of God is probably because this church was doing the things that they're doing, the works that they're doing without the spirit of God, without the wisdom of God, without the counsel of God, without the understanding, the might of God, you know, the sp seven spirits of God. And so, you know, they're just doing the work, doing the work, but there isn't really, it's not, really you know from god that they're doing they think it is or like you said they're doing it for god but it's not right it's just like works that are dead and um one of the things that was overemphasized was the the overconfidence word they were very overconfident and um he even said uh because of their overconfidence they neglected and then they were 
slothful. And, and, and sloth means, slothness means spiritual inactivity. You're not spiritually active. That's why you're dead in the spirit. And so um, actually the dead is worse than being uh, dull and confused. It's, it's worse than being dull and confused. You're dead. I mean, in, in the MSG vers version, it said something in the lines of like stone dead. It's literally like, it's hard rock. It's, it's <laughs> stone, but walang buhay. You know, it's not breathing. Buti pa yung nasa ICU dahil, you know, they have a, what do you call that? It, they're integrated, right? They, they have an oxygen that um, it's giving them air in their lungs. But, you know, um, yeah, being overconfident. But I think the overconfidence, it's not because, it, it is because of their own strength, not because of their confidence in God. So that's the thing, too. They, there wasn't a reliance in God. There wasn't a trust in God. They trusted in the, like what Sister Nana said, because of the video, they trusted in the, the, that, the walls right they were so overconfident in that and so i think in the same manner for us like are we just overconfident with the things that we just see the tangible things that we see instead of you know just trusting god and and relying on the holy spirit and you know uh, over the weekend we talked about walking in the spirit what does that mean even in the little thing holy spirit tugs us he talks to us and how do you respond to that, right? Because if we can't be faithful in the small things, how can we be faithful in the big things? And you ended with good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. I think that's the antidote to being dead, that when a task or assignment is given to us. Uh, actually, one of the things that I was going to say, um, in all of the letters, Jesus in the NKJV version, he starts after like he um, describes himself. He actually starts with, I know your works in all of them. I know your works. So like he knows the works of all of the churches and then he tells them, you know, all of the things. But I think like, so what I'm saying is that just be faithful. They, that That the antidote to being dead is just being faithful to what a uh, task assignment has given to us and be wholehearted in it have joy in it and so that when god sees it it's perfect so that's what that amen thank you for that sister myra truly yes it's our the faithfulness of God will really should bring us to our being faithful to Him. So, no more voice. I I can go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, so one thing that really like made me think about this was, um, when you guys mentioned that the Church of Sardis was very. Not just the church, but the whole of Sardis was very financially and e economically prosperous. And that made me think about how much that actually affects us um, today. How our economic um, status can affect our relationship with God and how comfortable we are. Because if we really think about it, the more comfortable we are, the less we feel the need for God. And I feel like it shouldn't be like that. Like we should always have a consistent uh, wanting and a fire for God. And it shouldn't be based on our economic status. It shouldn't be based on how comfortable we are. But it should be based on the love and the reciprocating of that love that he has for us. And that's something that I really want to incorporate in my life. That no matter what's going on in my life, that's not going to affect my relationship with God. Even if I'm at my high, even if I'm at my low. I want to be consistently on fire with God. I want to be consistently pursuing Him because I know that ultimately my circumstances in life are not going to get me to heaven, but it's my relationship with God that's going to get me to heaven. And that's like a big, you know, focus that I really want in my life. That's beautiful, Amil. Thank you. 
Jiu, uh, we want to hear from you. Jiu. Thank you. So for my, during like this, like, like the study, the thing that like really caught me was just the whole part of the be watchful. Um, because when you're watchful, you're alert, you're like on edge. There's, there, there's like, there's purpose, um, yeah, with, with it. And, uh, this is something that the, the Sardis church and even just like the, the city of Sardis itself you know, as a whole was lacking. Um, like the church, um, they ended up being lacking in like this, this urgency, the, the, this alertness, um, to like God's presence to God's like the, the, the move of God, um, and just started doing like their own thing without the, yeah, just w without God at that point. Um, and as well with the, the city itself, um, it, uh, they basically essentially allowed themselves to get, uh, invaded because what, what essentially happened was that, uh, one of the, the guards was carelessly patrolling the, the walls and un unbeknownst to him, uh, the enemy troops were spying on him and watched him go through like the secret paths, um, into the city. And because he basically revealed, um, that the proper paths to go into the city, the enemy was able to invade into them. And just like that, uh, I feel like that's also like applicable to, to us, like, um, uh as to why we should always be watchful ourselves to the move of god we should be watchful as to how we align and how we step um in that that path or how we don't step in that path because even when we're not watchful the enemy is always watchful and if we don't step in the right way the, the, it, he is always so quick to take advantage of that to um, to attack the, these weaknesses that we present to him. And so that's why it's always so just important to, for us to be watchful, to, to be watchful of what God is trying to show us, um, what he, his path is, what he wants, um, uh, where he's leading us, watching our own selves of like how we step um, in our daily lives as well. And through this way, we're going to be alerted to how the enemy is moving as well to avoid that as best as possible. That's good. Thank you, Gia. Truly, yes, we be watchful because that's what the enemy does only to kill John 10.10, 10, to kill, steal, and destroy. Heal our peace, destroy our peace and our love and whatever we blessings we have from God, he's there ready to steal, kill, and destroy all those. So yes, truly, as Gia mentioned, let's be watchful. Sister Lilitz. What happened? Go ahead, Sister Nora. Uh, <laughs> no, we're <laughs> laughing for, for a little bit. Yeah, Sister Myra has already spoken a little bit about this, but my take that it really struck me is when Jesus mentioned about uh, that that the the uh, the works of the church before God is imperfect. And when I was reading about this, and it, 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 then it dawned on me that really nothing is really going to count. Whatever works we are doing for God, nothing is going to count unless our heart is perfect to Him. No. And, um, uh, you know, they, they are born again, but, you know, uh, God found them lacking in their dedication and devotion to Him, you know. And in talking about perfection, I believe that uh, Jesus was pertaining to that passage in Matthew 5, and that is the, you know, that we are called to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect, you know. So we need to, I, they, the third, the third is, and I, I need to be perfect, which means I have to be spiritually mature, you know, and meaning living out my righteousness, which actually begins with the, 
with the change in my inner person, you know. And unless the change really happens, no matter what I do for God, it's not going to count. He will find it always imperfect because it is actually my work, not his work on me. I, it's different to when 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 he is working uh in 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 my my inner being in my my spirit you know and i am and my heart is actually wholeheartedly devoted to him it's very different you know that then i am counting on my own strength you know so there's got to be a change in my inner life you know which means from the inside Meaning living, and, and, and I also need to be living in God's standard. You know, there is that, um, that passage I, I, in the Old Testament, you were, you were way, but found wanting. Tinimbang ka, ngunit kulang. Hindi ka umabot. This means me, hindi ako umabot sa standard ng Lord. You know, so, uh, <laughs> Ano yung pastor? Daniel 6. Daniel 6. Yeah, tinimbang ka ang unit ko lang. You know, hindi, hindi, hindi oh, umabot sa standard ng Panginoon. Like in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one is, no matter how much you do for the Lord, nothing is going to count. You will always be found one thing. You know, and, and you know, that, that, change that's going to happen to be spiritual and mature and to actually have a change in your inner being is actually a gift that we can receive only from God. There's nobody else. There's 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 no other structure but God alone. God God alone can 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 change us and to be able to follow the standard of God there's gonna be the uh, a total change in us you know so for me the impact on me is uh implementation of more changes that i have identified in myself you know and that i should not rely on any work that we do for our God, that that's for me. We do for our God because it's not going to count. I will be, my work will always be imperfect as far as God is concerned because he wants my heart. He wants my submission. He wants everything that, that I, I have. He wants the things that I desire, you know, and he wants me to put him put him as my priority all the time. So relationship with the Lord is very, very important. And that's what I, that's, that's the, the impact to me tonight is better your relationship with God, Eleanor. You know, you cannot take it for granted. No, that is your, your faith is your vehicle to heaven. Unless you have that faith in God, nothing is going to matter. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat. I made a mistake. That's not Daniel 6, Daniel 5. Daniel 5. Uh -oh. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Nora. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I just want to make sing it. Uh, mm -hmm. The word remember and forget. Those are very key mm. to... Um, whether you're on a live church or you're dead church, whether you're um, actively believing in God or just pretending to believe but really do not believe, and 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 the sad the the sad the encouragement of the scripture is remember, remember you have fallen, remember what you heard, remember what you've been taught, and because when you forget. When you forget, it it's going to be it's it's a cue that you are far away from God. To me, that's you know. So remembering always, like I would always say, you know, when you're when you're um, 
when you're presented with trouble, when, when facing difficulties and testings and trials, it is always good to remember what God has done to you. you. It's always good to remember how much God loves you or how much you love God or uh, all those things. Because when you forget, that's already detrimental. If you're forgetting what God has done and therefore you succumb to the, to the pressure, that means, wow, you're distant. You're far away. Your relationship has been, has been, uh, there's been a wager in between your relationship. And so when you're not, when we're not paying attention, when we're not remembering, we should be alerted to the fact that, wow, something is wrong with my relationship with God. Because when you forget, that's when you succumb to trouble. That's when you succumb to unbelief, doubt, and fear. That's when you allow uh, the problem, the storm in front of you to overwhelm you rather than your faith overwhelming the storm. And so, you know, just very key. I mean, one, one, just, you know, the word remember and then the word forget is going to become a matter of life and death for all of us in the end times. Amen and amen. Um, <clears throat> I, I was going to add to Sister Nora's perfect, the word perfect, and as uh, what is this? Judah, Sister Myra mentioned that, uh, for I have not found your work perfect before God. So uh, I was just remembering that um, we we need to be perfectly aligned with him and with the Holy Spirit. And the perfect here doesn't mean the perfect in definition of the world, but in his definition. Actually, the AMPC translation says, not meeting the requirements of my God. That's the AMPC translation. Thank you. Uh, just like everyone was saying, you know, Wake up, be watchful, be continuously guard, you know, guard your heart. You know, it cannot be a one-time thing, you know. And when that time comes, just like uh, Sister Melda was saying, sometimes we are on the mountains, sometimes we are on the valley. But when you are in the mountains, like sis, but Brother Amir was saying, you know, you have to be thankful. You know, I think uh, just like what the enemy did with Sardis, you know, because they became so overconfident, they become, became so careless in guarding their fortress. So uh, even for sa Satan, that's what she does. You know, when we are so in the mountains, we became complacent. And, you know, but in the mountains and in the valley, we have to, you know, be thankful to the Lord, especially in our valleys. Uh, just like Pastor was saying, especially when the time you are in your valleys, that is the time to remember what he had done, you know, and what you have been taught. So, you know, all of us, just like uh, Sister Mary was saying, we've been there. But just uh, like what uh, Sister Myra said, the, uh, all the seven churches, he said, uh, remember, uh, I know your work. So he's commending us to the things that, you know, he knows our works, he knows our heart. And for us, or sometimes fall, he gives us correction. That's how God, how much God loves us. So we, when those things happen, we have to go back always there. We have to remember what it did. We have to remember what we have been taught. So we will not be... We will not stay on that stage of complacency in our life, stage of uh, um, 
uh, what do you call this of uh, weakness stage of na you you are on that stage na you feel like you are so hopeless you cannot stay god will not let you stay in there because he will let you remember it remember what he has done and you have to go back you have to repent and go back you know and you know uh, just like what he did sardis he they he thought they thought they cannot climb to that fortress that they have their thought they are so safe so secured we cannot think that in our lives especially in our walk we have to guard our heart we have to be watchful and always be alert in our walk with the lord because just like uh sister lilita said the enemy is always there to come steal and destroy you know and uh, uh we thank god because for his love and for his grace for us that he will not let us stay on that just like sardis dead you know it's just the worst thing just like sister myra said the worst thing that will happen to our, to our life is to bed to be dead again we you know you cannot go, go back to where we are before our, our spirit is dead uh, just like there's nothing in there it's just like you are just living without hope without purpose um, and uh, and most of all we uh, you know just like what we have been taught on the sunday reminder for us that we have to continue to sleep walk in, in the spirit of god if not we will not really make it we will always fall and we will stay fall uh, so uh we thank you uh thank god for his reminder on the uh, especially for the church of sardis sardis you know so it's just it just it cannot even comprehend that you know that you will be dead inside uh, and being a christian po. thank you um yes and it's really a sad state because a lot of churches are dead just uh, going to the motions and rituals of showing that uh they're doing this they're doing mission they're doing whatever outreaches and uh, their worship is um all this worship galore <laughs> accessories but truly truly um are they aligned, truly are they aligned with the Holy Spirit and, and God? And, and you will discern that uh, uh, as uh, I guess it was, um, it was in San Francisco, it was in San Jose, or San Francisco, that uh, you went in the church, visited a church which was really well, well, well decorated with worship. Anyhow, um, it's 9.30, so um, I think Sister Percy is ready to say something. <laughs> I believe Sister Percy is ready to say something. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, uh, first of all, I just want to thank, the, thank you for your group four for a very nice presentation. So uh, whoever did this presentation please talk to me after the meeting i want to hire you for leo to see you just kidding anyway this presentation <laughs> speak to us and see and we see the heart of god right so so as the church of service we know that it's described as having a reputations of a uh, being dead, but it is really spiritu spiritually dead, right? Alive. I mean, being alive, but spiritually dead. But in many ways, we could see the church inside this mirrors our, you know, lives today, right? Many Christians are fall in this category, uh, including me. And many, we may attend, probably we may attend services, just like, many says about this engage in fellowship participate in church activities 
Yet in our hearts is we are not aligned with God. There is no impact. There is no fruits on what we are doing, right? We risk of becoming, you know, the service church, alive in name only. And this reminds me that appearance can be deceiving. We could see a lot of people in the church, but we don't know the spiritual condition. And that is the question. So what impacted me in this teaching is truly it rebukes me, it warms me, encourages me, and also it blessed me. So one thing that is really get to my attention in here is the way out. We could see the, the issue, right? But God give us the way out that we could see it in verse 2, right? Hold on. That it says in there, wake up, right? What you said, uh, sorry. I cannot see it. He said, wake up, strengthen what little remains for you. Even what is left is almost dead. He said, strengthen what is little remains. So whatever things that we have in there, you know, we have to wake up and strengthen that and go back. So we could see a lot of uh, way out that the God's, uh, that the group were presented to us, you know, the specific action that we have to wake up, you know, strengthen what remains, repent, hold past, and be ready for his return. So as we, as we uh, do this thing, you know, if we see that we are falling in this church, we just falling in this category as alive only by name, you know, and we do this specific actions, right? We could see the promise, right? The wearing with the white robes, and we want to see ourselves to be like that. So basically, this is really a uh, uh, awakening to me or a rebuke, really, to to evaluate myself. What is the conditions of my heart? Where I am right now, especially me. Where I am right now. That is the questions and. Uh, thank you, Group 4, and thank you for that revelation. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Percy. Group 5. We are Group 5. And now that concludes our... Sorry, sorry. That that concludes our Church of Sardis. And uh, that goes for all of us, as Sister Percy said, evaluate ourselves. Are we dead? Or are we alive? So, um, Sister Imelda, we can can you close us in prayer, Sister Imelda? Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one of us, Lord, uh, sharing their thoughts, sharing their take, oh Lord, in regards for um uh this topic lord the sardis, sardis church father we really acknowledging your holiness lord your majesty father we know O oh lord that um you know all what we do O oh lord god you are the god who uh sees our heart sees the heart of all people and nothing is hidden from your sight lord just as you called, Father God, the uh, Sardis Church to wake up from its slumber. Lord, we ask that you awaken our heart, Father God. If there are areas in our life where we have grown complacency in our walk with you. Father, forgive us, Lord, for any ways we have grown cold. Forgive us, Lord, where there is spiritual deadness. Lord, breathe, uh, breathe your life on us, Father God. Help us, Lord, to uh, recognize the areas in our life where we have been fallen, where our faith is lacking, and where we forget or neglect your call to live, O oh Lord God, in a way you want us to be, Father. Lord, we ask to strengthen us to walk in the Spirit and walk with you, taking the right step father to live in holiness and the truth of your word god we pray lord let your holy spirit guide us and give us courage to uh, repent where we failed and fallen short and turn back fully and wholeheartedly to you O oh lord 
we know, oh God, that your desire is for us to be awake, alert, and be ready for your coming. We ask, Lord, in your name, help us to hold fast to what is true, to obey your word, and to overcome the spiritual deadness that sometimes comes in our life, Father. Thank you, O oh Lord God, hallelujah, for your promise that those who overcome will be dressed in white and their names will never be blotted out of the book of life. Lord, help us to remain faithful and to uh, walk in righteousness that you have called us to, Father. Help us, O oh Lord, to leave us a witness, not just in words, O oh God, but in action and our attitude of our lives, Lord. Father, we trust in your power to sustain us, to help us overcome, and to keep us awake to your presence, Father God. May our lives reflect your glory, and we pray that we may be found faithful when you return, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for this study of the seven churches, Lord, giving us warnings, correction, and reminding us, Lord, to hold fast, to maintain our faith in you. Thank you, O oh Lord God, that um, continue to um, help us, Lord, to remember and not forget the things that we have learned, Father, and help us to maintain our faith in you, to be watchful and not compromise the truth and keep our eyes on our relationship and walk with you, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for tonight. Thank you, Lord. And we pray, O oh God, that continue, O oh Lord, to um, open our heart, God, and uh, dig deeper and always remember, God, what you have done, what we have learned tonight, O oh Lord, and in the days to come, that we will be strengthened, O oh Lord God, according to your word, according in um, uh, our relationship with you, O oh Father. In Jesus' name we ask, amen.